about 8 billion inhabitants of planet Earth found out the same terrible news in one day. Someone saw it on TV. Others heard it on the phone while scrolling through social media or listening to music. Some witnessed this news in a dream while sleeping. Someone's voice said it in all languages to ensure everyone understood it. I have good news and bad news for you. Let's start with the bad news. You're all characters in YouTube videos in which your planet gets into a situation where the moon breaks in half. For the audience, it will be a hypothetical story, but for you, these events will become a reality. The good news is that I was joking. There is no good news. But don't worry, the apocalypse won't start on your planet. Maybe just a little bit. Have a nice day. At first, the entire population panics. Then, a few days later, everyone calms down. Maybe it was a mass hallucination, and the moon will be all right. But at this moment, scientists have discovered the danger. A colossal meteorite is flying towards us from the distant depths of space. This meteorite is super fast and pretty flat, but has sharp edges. Fortunately, it will miss the Earth by a few thousand miles, but the moon won't be that lucky. The meteorite flies through our Earth's only natural satellite directly in the middle. So it passes through the moon, sweeps past our planet, and flies away into distant space. At this moment, all people can't take their eyes off the moon. The meteorite cuts it perfectly in half, gently, clearly, painlessly. So what shall we do now? Will the Earth survive this? Our satellite breaks into two equal parts, but fortunately, they don't fly away from each other. The moon's great gravity attracts them back like a magnet. Scientists are sure that the parts will connect in a couple of billion years and the moon will become the same as it used to be. But the coolest thing is that people won't feel any changes. Everyone around the world will celebrate this good news. The voice was wrong. But then another problem appears. A massive meteorite in the form of a shoe is flying from the deepest space to us. It enters our solar system and approaches the Earth at high speed. The space boot crashes into one half of the moon and then flies away. Now, the moon is definitely breaking into two parts. The first half remains in the same place. The second one is flying towards us. A small meteor shower begins on Earth because of the falling moon fragments. But it's not so bad. Most of these rocks are burning up in the atmosphere. But almost the entire split-off half is falling apart around the orbit of our planet. It forms a stone belt. Now the Earth is like Saturn. Rotating fragments destroy part of our artificial satellites. Communication and the internet work inconsistently. It takes people a couple of years to restore a stable connection. The International Space Station no longer exists. Luckily, all the astronauts managed to return to Earth before half the moon got to them. So, moon rocks are flying around the planet, and people see half the moon in the sky. Life doesn't change much for the first few days, but those who live on the coast of the seas and oceans notice the consequences. The moon used to influence the tides. It was flying around the Earth and made oceans take an oval shape. There were tides on the side where the moon was closer. There were ebbs on the opposite side. But now, this schedule is wrong. Half of the moon attracts less water. Yes, the moon lost half its weight and began approaching the Earth. But its gravitational force has become weaker. Seabirds, many species of fish, sea turtles, and other coastal animals may not survive these changes. Their natural instincts associated with the moon help them determine the time for getting food, breeding, and flying south. For example, tiny turtles expect a strong tide in the morning. They run to the water, but the water doesn't reach them. Turtles can't hide in the ocean in time and become dinner for seagulls. Crabs can't lay eggs because the tide has started earlier than usual. Wolves go mad in the woods. They howl loudly every night and can't stop. The whole natural world can't understand what's going on. The human body is also feeling some discomfort. Many people have low and high blood pressure, and some experience severe headaches. Half of the moon changes the entire ecosystem of the planet. Adapting to new conditions will take several tens, maybe hundreds of years. A couple of weeks pass, and people notice the days are now shorter. The moon always slowed the Earth's rotation and made one day last 24 hours. The Earth is spinning faster now. The night and the morning come earlier than everyone is used to. 
Earth rotation speed has increased and reduced the number of hours per day to 15. People suffer from insomnia or oversleeping. The body needs time to get used to it. Work schedules are changing all over the world. Previously, people came to the office at 9 and left at 6. Now, they arrive at 7 and leave at 2 p.m. Sleep time got shorter, and people are really sad because of this. Progress slows down because the short working time. The technologies of the future are now 20 to 30 years late. Hourly pay remains the same, so bosses now pay less for fewer working hours. The whole moon stabilized the weather and climate on the planet. Look at Mars. It has two small moons. They quickly spin around it and rock Mars around on its axis. As a result, strong winds, sandstorms, and thunderstorms often happen on the red planet. Now the half of the moon that approached us takes the Earth out of stable rotation. This changes the seasonal temperatures in the world. It even gets hotter in hot places. And snowstorms are raging in cold regions. There are short, massive downpours instead of sunny weather. A typical breeze can grow into a hurricane and small waves into a tsunami. The seasons are changing faster now. Winters are colder and summers are hotter. Changing the rotation of the planet affects the Earth's magnetic field. Since the compass and navigation systems are unstable now, we need to recalculate where the north and south are. Birds can't fly south to wait out the winter since they don't know what direction to fly. Their inner compass is broken. Several hundred years have passed. People are entirely accustomed to the new conditions on Earth. New species of animals and fish have appeared. Birds can navigate the sky by the moon again. The planet's economy has been restored. Hourly wages have become higher. People now get enough sleep from 5 to 6 hours a day and work for 4 to 5 hours. The reduction of day and night has also affected the entertainment industry. Movies now last one hour. One episode of some TV series lasts 30 minutes. Life goes faster. An average person now lives to be 96 years old. In fact, the passage of time hasn't changed at all. Its calculus did. Several thousand years have passed. People look different now. Now they have big eyes that absorb more light. Half of the moon doesn't shine as bright as the whole thing, so the nights have become darker. It took the human eye a couple of thousand years to develop the ability to see clearly in this new dark. Animals need to navigate better in these conditions, so their eyes have become larger and more sensitive. During all this time, people have cleared the orbit of moon rocks. Several space stations fly around our planet. And again, people hear this strange voice that once told them that they were all characters in one hypothetical YouTube video. This time, the voice says, Your story ends because the video ends. I'm sorry. Good night. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. It's staring at you, and you're staring at it. A giant eye that seems to be pulling you into an abyss. You're hovering over it in your space copter. But however scared you might be, you still need to do your job. So you send your copter down to the surface of the red planet. Right, that's where you are, on Mars. But first things first, you take a moment to remember everything you know about the fourth planet from the Sun. It's the last of the inner planets. Those are the planets that lie within the asteroid belt. They're also called terrestrial, since they're made up of rocks and metals. The atmosphere of Mars is much thinner than Earth's. It contains 95% carbon dioxide and a mere 1% of oxygen. In other words, don't even think about pulling off your helmet. Anyway, there's no time to waste. You land on the surface of the planet and find yourself in a brownish-red world. That's a good thing you're wearing a spacesuit. This place is freezing cold. The thermometer sewn into the sleeve of your suit shows minus 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Time to take your first step on the Martian surface. The planet looks quite colorful, and the hue of a particular area depends on the minerals that make up the soil. The ground under your feet is covered in fine dust. It looks like rust. The same orange dust is in the air. Good thing you have your own supply of oxygen and don't need to breathe Martian air. The layer of this dust covering the surface of Mars can be from 6 to 40 feet thick. 
You hope you'll avoid getting swallowed by some Martian quicksand. You start walking, feeling very light. Mars is just 15% of our planet's volume and a mere 11% of Earth's mass. It means that gravity here is much weaker. Its pull is 38% as strong as the pull of gravity on the surface of Earth. You jump up and down and then try to run several hundred feet. Ha! <laughs> you haven't even broken a sweat. What makes it harder for you to explore the place on foot is that the planet's surface is rocky, covered with craters and volcanoes, old dry lake beds, and canyons. You see something huge towering on the horizon, but you try to suppress your curiosity. You'll have enough time to figure out what it is later. Suddenly, a massive cloud appears in the distance. It looks as if a huge herd of horses is approaching you. In reality, you better get back into your copter and fly away as fast as you can. That's one of Mars's infamous dust storms. They mostly occur during the summer in the southern hemisphere of the red planet. They can sometimes cover the entire planet, and you see the largest ones from Earth. You hop into your copter and set a course for the eye that scared you so much. Winding channels that look like veins run through the eyeball. But the closer you get, the less it looks like an actual eye. Soon you realize it's a crater. It's giant, almost 19 miles across. Around the crater, which looks as if it has a pupil, there are other even bigger craters. They likely formed billions of years ago. That's when Mars had to withstand multiple attacks of space rocks. But why is the eye crater darker than the surrounding landscape? Scientists think that once, there was Martian water in the enormous pit. Remember those channels? They were likely carrying that water. And since the crater was filled with water, it stopped some substances and minerals from eroding away. Now, remember that towering something on the horizon? It's time to go and explore it. When you come close, you realize it's the largest shield volcano in the entire solar system, Olympus Mons. It's more than 370 miles in diameter, which is almost the same size as the state of Arizona. You tilt your head. Wow! The mountain is 16 miles high. It's also rimmed by 4-mile-high cliffs. To picture the sheer size of the volcano, let's make some comparisons. The largest volcano on Earth is Mauna Loa, towering around 2.5 miles above sea level and stretching 75 miles across. Sounds impressive. But the volume of Olympus Mons is around 100 times larger than that of Mauna Loa. The Martian giant could swallow the whole chain of Hawaiian islands from Kauai to Hawaii. But why is this volcano so large? It might be the result of lower surface gravity and higher eruption rates. Or the reason might be the red planet's crust, which is very different from Earth's. It's static. You see, on our planet, the crust is made of 15 to 20 moving tectonic plates. As plates move over hot spots producing lava, new volcanoes form, and the already existing ones become extinct. That's why lava can get to the surface through many vents. But on Mars, the crust isn't broken into the same tectonic plates as on Earth. And the lava has nothing to do but pile in one very, very large volcano. So, how about getting closer to the enormous mountain? But once you step out of your copter on Martian soil, the ground under your feet starts shaking. Well, that's a Mars quake. But how can it happen if Mars doesn't have any actively shifting tectonic plates? Specialists from NASA are sure Mars quakes occur when energy inside the planet gets suddenly released. It leads to rock fractures and cracks in the planet's crust. Another powerful jolt, and one of such cracks opens right next to you. You fall to the ground, afraid to move. But soon, everything calms down. You wait for a couple of minutes, just to be sure, and get up. Oh look! Here's a perfect opportunity to explore the insides of the red planet. The crack is large enough to send a special research robot. The planet's crust is thin and consists of volcanic basalt rock. The mantle that surrounds the core of the planet is made up of thick silicates, oxygen, and some minerals. You can probably compare it with soft, rocky toothpaste. Mars's mantle is also much thinner than Earth's. It's just 800 to 1100 miles thick. As for the planet's core, it's made mostly of iron, nickel, and sulfur and is between 900 and 1200 miles wide. This core doesn't move. 
That's why Mars doesn't have a planet-wide magnetic field. Unfortunately, your drone is now lost in the depths of the red planet. You leave it there and continue your exploration. Your next destination is Valles Marineris. It sounds more like an Italian red sauce, but it's actually an enormous canyon, or rather a canyon system, that runs along Mars' equator. It's as awe-inspiring as Olympus Mons, more than 2,600 miles long and over 4 miles deep. The thing is so huge, it could span the entire continental United States from the Pacific to the Atlantic Ocean. Now let's make another comparison. One of the most famous canyons on Earth is the Grand Canyon in Arizona. But it's 10 times shorter and around 4 times less deep than this canyon on Mars. Some scientists think that Valles Marineris is the edge of an enormous tectonic plate. It moves so slowly that almost nothing has happened in that region over millions of years. And the movement of this plate probably began 3.5 billion years ago. Anyway, the only thing left on your today's to-do list is to visit Mars's moons. They're among the tiniest in the solar system. Phobos is the largest of the two. It orbits a mere 3,700 miles above the surface of Mars. There's no other known moon that travels closer to its mother planet. It whips around the red planet three times a day, while the second moon, Deimos, needs 30 hours to complete one orbit. Phobos is getting closer and closer to Mars, about 6 feet each 100 years. Within the next 50 million years, it'll either crash into the planet or break apart and form a ring. Happy but tired, you return to your spaceship. Tomorrow, you'll continue exploring the magnificent red planet. And who knows what discoveries are awaiting you. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Our universe is full of both amazing and terrifying things. You already know about quasars, black holes, dark matter, and so on. But how about the horrors of space that you haven't even heard of? Would you like to visit the most bizarre worlds in the universe? And it's not me who made this list, but NASA themselves. Welcome to the Galaxy of Horrors, NASA's awesome Halloween collection. Please join me on a journey to some planets and tell me which ones you would consider the most horrible. Buckle up! Our first destination is a gas giant called Tress 2 b it's located 750 light years away from us. If we used a regular spaceship, it would take us about 10 million years to get there. Tras 2b orbits a yellow dwarf, a star similar to our sun. It also weighs about 1.5 times more than Jupiter. So, what's so special about it? Well, if you're afraid of the dark, you definitely don't want to visit this place. It's the planet of eternal night, the darkest one of all the planets known to us. But it's not that far from its star, so why is that? The thing is, the surface of Tress 2b reflects light even worse than coal does. Because of this, it seems that there's no light at all. If you were flying across the surface of this planet, it would be like walking with a blindfold on your eyes. Oh wait, actually there is some light. An eerie deep red glow surrounds the surface of the planet. This glow is created by the burning atmosphere which makes Tress 2b a scorching planet. The air there is even hotter than lava. Oh, but if you think that was bad, let me show you the next place of our horror journey. NASA wasn't beating about the bush while nicknaming this one. Now, we're not just talking about one planet, but three at once. They're also located quite far away, 2,300 light years from the sun. We would have reached them by ship in about 35 million years. All the planets are in the constellation Virgo, and each is extremely light, much lighter than the Earth. These three exoplanets are called Poltergeist, Dragger, and Phobator. <laughs> cool names, huh? It's because each of these planets is about to become a ghost soon. The thing is, they don't revolve around a star, but around a pulsar. Pulsars are rotating neutron stars with an extremely powerful magnetic field. In simple words, these are the stars that exploded one day. After the explosion, they usually emit such a powerful pulse that it causes the star to rotate at an unimaginable speed. Several thousand rotations per second. At the same time, they constantly emit electromagnetic pulses that affect everything around them. 
So, you've probably already guessed what's happening with our zombie planets. They're slowly, gradually being destroyed under the gigantic influence of radiation. One day, they'll disappear without a trace. Ghost-like planets orbiting an undead star? Yeah, Zombie World is a fitting name. It's also not surprising that scientists nicknamed this pulsar Lich, despite the long official name. Well, at least these guys stick together on their final dance. This planet has a long name, so bear with me. HD 189733b. This gas giant is 65 light years away from us. It would have taken around 1 million years to get there on a spaceship. HD, uh, well, this planet is slightly more massive than Jupiter and orbits its star, an orange dwarf, all alone. At first glance, it may seem friendly. A pleasant blue color and curls on the surface. Kind of resembles a summer sky or foam on sea waves, right? Oh, looks are very deceptive, my friend. This planet has a pleasant cobalt blue color due to the hazy blowtorched atmosphere. This atmosphere contains silicates that condense when heated. In other words, the clouds on this planet have rain made of glass. Yes, it rains hot glass shards here. Oh, and if that's not enough, there's a raging wind on the surface, which is moving at a speed of 5,400 miles per hour. Just to compare, the fastest wind on Earth had a speed of 254 miles per hour, about 20 times weaker. And because of this, hundreds of thousands of glass shards rush horizontally across the planet's surface at breakneck speed. I really don't envy anyone who would want to try to land there. By the way, this isn't the only example of strange rains in our universe. For example, it rains molten iron on the planet Domitium. Or let's take so-called carbon planets. Their existence hasn't yet been proven, but if they do exist, there would be tons of black poisonous clouds, and it would rain pure gasoline and hot liquid asphalt. Oh, and also, raindrops would explode upon touching the surface. Eh, nothing special. The next planet, though, is actually really strange. It didn't just revolve around its star. It lived inside the star. This cosmic miracle is called Koi 55b, or Kepler 70b. This planet is very far away from us, 4,000 light years. It would take about 70 million years on a spaceship. It's twice as light as Earth and fully rotates around its star in just a couple of hours. A long time ago, it was an ordinary Earth-like planet about the size of Jupiter. It was peacefully and calmly orbiting its red dwarf star, Koi 55. But everything changed about 700 million years ago. Perhaps you've heard that in a couple billion years, our sun will begin to expand into a huge star, absorbing everything in its path. Well, this is the fate of red dwarfs. Sooner or later, they increase, turning into incredibly hot blue giants. The same thing happened with Koi 55. This star began to increase in size and heat up in temperature, gradually turning into a blue-white giant. It was ready to devour its nearest planets, but Koi 55b didn't care about it. When the star reached it, this planet just settled inside. And moreover, after some time, it left its star, simply returning to the new orbit. How was that even possible? Life inside its star turned Koi 55b into a red-hot round stone. It's one of the hottest planets we've discovered so far. The temperature on it reaches 12,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It's hotter than the sun, which is, let me remind you, an actual star. And for some reason, it's still alive and lives as if nothing happened. Unfortunately, sooner or later, the planet will disappear anyway. It's slowly evaporating itself due to the incandescent atmosphere. But still, it somehow managed to survive the journey through the star, which isn't typical for regular planets, to put it mildly. I envy this willpower. However, not all planets are so lucky. Some are gradually being destroyed by their stars, and there is even an entire system among them. This last planet is a sad loner. It's located 870 light years away from us. The journey by ship to it would take about 25 million years. This planet is about 1.5 times more massive than Jupiter. This is a very sad, dark planet. A doomed gas giant, which is very similar to hot Jupiter, orbits its star all alone. At the same time, 
It's located so close to its star that its orbital period takes just one day. Of course, because of this proximity, the star gradually absorbs WASP-12b. The scorching heat of the star is slowly destroying and devouring the planet's atmosphere. The planet has only around 10 million years left. But what's more interesting, because of this stretching, WASP-12b acquired the shape of an egg. It doesn't even resemble an actual planet anymore. It's also very hot. The surface temperature of the gas giant reaches 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Also, a spectrograph of cosmic origin, or COS for short, found that the planet exchanges matter with its star. They're located so close that they give each other part of their chemical elements. This is a common phenomenon in closely spaced binary star systems. But this is the first time scientists have seen this in a star-planet relationship. What a unique system. To be honest, if I was guaranteed complete security, I'd be excited to visit at least some of them. What about you? Please let me know in the comments. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.